July 10th about 7.30 p.m. And this is Zero Petty Foggery, sir. Episode number nine. And I am Daniel Durini. Um, coming to you right now and for the, for your weekend. You might be rained in the whole entire day. It's goodness it's been going. Um, but you're going to have some updates to, to listen to and some content to watch. Um, so I got... Um, a recommendation generally marauding for your ears but this time for your eyes watching a little bit of Netflix um, six part documentary series Time, the story of Khalif Browder um, I'm going to give you an update on some uh, lawyers in this case judges behaving badly with uh, again our good friend Judge John Russo um, you'll see an update in there um I have a quick update about a lawsuit against the state of New Jersey in the Veterans Home, the Veterans Memorial Home in Menlo Park that we've been discussing previously um, relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I got a Major League Grubbin update for you guys coming from my uh, Habibis and you'll know what that means in a moment. And then last but not least, um, landlord-tenant sex segment um, kind of discussing uh, self-help issues that um, have been arising that I've been getting some phone calls about. So check into that and uh, thanks for stopping by. Tuesday, June 23rd, about 12.30 p.m. Um, I would say marauding for your ears, but more marauding for your eyes. Um, just finished six-part documentary series, um, Time, the Khalif Browder story. Um, not an easy story to listen to and watch, um, discusses the New York Police Department, discusses the prosecutor's offices, discusses the corrections officers, discusses Rikers Island, and, um, just a heart-wrenching story to watch, um, especially right now. Um, I highly suggest it and give you some perspective. Um, check it out. Thanks. Hey guys, June 24th, about 1 45 PM. Big, big news. Um, coming to you dated June 3rd by attorney Paul M. DaCosta, uh, notice of claim and damages against the state of New Jersey. Uh, the estate of Joseph P. Ivanitsky against the New Jersey Veterans Memorial Home at Menlo Park. Um, a claim has been made for a lawsuit against the Veterans Home. Um, Mr. Ivanitsky contracted COVID, became gravely ill, then died on April 12th due to gross departures from the standards of nursing care and infection control at the v New Jersey Veterans Memorial Home at Men Menlo Park. Departures include the administration of the facility, directing facility not to use masks and gloves because it may scare residents, waiting over a month before isolating the residents who were confirmed or suspected of having COVID, continuing to permit, permit residents to congregate in common areas even after the administration knew COVID-19 positive residents and staff were in the building, permitting COVID-19 positive and presumptive positive staff to continue working in the building, failing to timely test patients and staff, prohibiting staff from gaining access to necessary personal protection equipment and recklessly endangering the safety and well-being of patients by failing to timely and appropriately institute necessary infection prevention safety measures. Um, the amount of the claim and the notice of the claim is in the amount of $5 million. Um, the injuries and damages lost include wrongful death, physical and emotional pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life, respiratory distress and failure, air hunger, fever, sepsis, septic shock, and disability. In addition, the loss of the decedent's guidance, counseling, and companionship, out-of-pocket medical expenses, and all health insurance liens. Quite the the staggering allegation against the New Jersey Veterans Home um, in Menlo Park. You're going to see a whole sweep of these 
types of lawsuits coming um, against uh, nursing homes, hospitals, doctors. It should be interesting, so look out. Hey everybody, June 30th, about 12.15 p.m. Coming to you with a quick up update in the section of lawyers, and in this case, judges behaving badly. Our good friend, Judge John Russo, uh, unfortunately, um, was the subject of a previous segment um, discussing some of his conduct. And in this case, he's made the very wise decision of resolving a lawsuit, um, a sexual harassment lawsuit from his ex-law clerk for approximately a quarter of a million dollars. Um, Russo essentially would threaten his law clerk or people in general that he had the ability to end careers. And in this circumstance, he essentially said that he ended the career of McGreevy, uh, which uh, New Jersey folks might be familiar with. Pretty interesting comment. Um, essentially, the law clerk uh, would position chairs around her desk for the purposes of keeping Russo at a distance. Um, there were a couple instances where he sat in his chambers um, spreading his legs and asking her to come closer, which she naturally rebuked. Um, there's a list of other things that are just um, disgusting. No other way to describe it. So uh, June 17th, he entered into this settlement with his former law clerk um, and he hopefully gets out of the spotlight and is no longer a part of the legal community in New Jersey for, for a long time coming. Just terrible, gives us all a bad name. Hey everybody, it's uh, July 7th. Been a while since I've uh, done an update video been uh, taking some time off with the holiday and I hope you all have been enjoying your time off as well. Um, wanted to get back to you with an update. Um, what a very contentious time right now when it comes to landlord-tenant relationships in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. I don't think it's any secret that a lot of people aren't working. Uh, if you are working, you're not making the same amount of money that you were. Um, landlords being in the same positions and What's the, what's the thing that everybody always says is you can always guarantee that your property or your possessions will make you money in some form or fashion. Well, in this circumstance, uh, that's no longer the case right now. Um, tenants are not making money at the same pace that they were when they signed up for apartments. And now we're kind of in a circumstance where a lot of landlords aren't getting rent on the first of the month. You're not getting rent sometimes at all. Um, and that goes for residential or commercial situations. Um, now, a lot of landlords, no matter what the circumstances, have been trying to help themselves um, in, in different circumstances because the court systems are not able to evict people. Um, as of right now, um, there are no residential evictions until 60 days after the state of emergency is lifted in the state of New Jersey. Um, there's a decent question as to whether or not that applies to uh, commercial evictions, um, but I know that I'll, there are essentially no court appearances right now. So um, in, in most circumstances, there's been uh, a, some defiance, um, and it's led to things like what I'm reporting on now. Um, some landlords are using harassment or threats to force out tenants during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, they could be doing things like refusing to repair parts in the apartments, shutting off utilities, having harassment um, either by their staff or maintenance workers. They could be texting and calling tenants, changing locks, uh, towing vehicles, harassing their family, and even going to the point of sending movers to show up to their apartment to move things. Um, bottom line is this. If you're a landlord, do not do this. If you're a tenant, know that your landlord is doing something that is against the law, okay? United States statute 
2A39-1, a landlord who illegally locks out a tenant may be subject to both civil and criminal penalties. The landlord may need to reimburse the tenant for up to three times the monthly rent and all damages approximately caused, including attorney's fees. Criminal penalties were recently added to the statute to include a charge of disorderly persons for anyone either performing the illegal lockout or owning the property where it was performed. Landlords should keep in mind the fact that shutting off any utility which the tenant has been receiving or is considered to be tantamount to an illegal lockout under the law. The immediate concern is tenants who are illegally locked out is getting back possession. So if this were to happen, you'd be filing an order to show cause in your county. Um, There's a $50 application fee and you'll essentially within three to five days be let back into uh, your premises. Um, There is nothing that replaces the actual procedure of filing for an eviction, proceeding and having your court appearance on that eviction, having your matter heard before a judge if necessary, and having a judgment of possession entered. So no self-help. Landlords do not do it. You'll pay the price. Tenants understand that it is illegal if they do do it. Um, I've been doing a lot of discussions, having a lot of discussions with uh, my landlords and my clients sometimes tenants and i'm saying to them listen you need to make a deal okay very very basic bottom line have discussions between your landlords and your tenants come to some understanding about how much money is coming in how much money you can pay and attempt to pay your rent over an extended period of time do not let it sit you don't want to be in a circumstance where you're not paying anything um because you don't want to be stuck in a circumstance where at the end of this state of emergency in this pandemic, um, you owe six months worth of rent on the first month. Um, There's a lot of questions as to how this whole thing is gonna be playing out. So heads up on that and there's some uh, good information for you. Talk to you soon. June 30th, 1215, uh, Major League Grub in section for this week. uh, Had the opportunity to celebrate Father's Day with my uh, future father-in-law this past weekend and intent on celebrating it with my actual father um, this coming Sunday and in anticipation um, made tabbouleh which is a Lebanese salad. Um, the recipe is from my from my grandmother um, and it, for all of you that don't know it is um, essentially a salad it includes parsley, mint, uh, a, a very fine burgrel wheat uh, scallions, yellow onions, um, tomatoes, um, salt, pepper, cinnamon, and a little bit of allspice um, mixed with uh, lemon and lime juice and a little bit of olive oil. It's all chopped very fine, very thin. It's a very refreshing salad and very delicious um, recipe that I learned uh, from sitting with my grandmother, uh, Mima, and, and making. So, um, definitely passing out that recipe for all that all that want to endeavor into making it It does take a lot of chopping does take a lot of patience um but definitely worth it in the end so uh you guys let me know if you want that recipe and uh major league grubbing section tabbouleh homemade tabbouleh put your hand down why are you smiling because because i love the law The, the law is fun fun sir it's fun yes You sure? I think. Now you're thinking. First you smile, then you're thinking. You think the law is still fun? Uh, yes. Sir? Yes. No, 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 sir. No. It it was fun. Not anymore, though, is it? Is it? Not right now. It's not fun anymore? Not even a little bit? Uh, no. Make up your mind. Think, since you're thinking. Go on, think. Is it fun? No, sir. No, absolutely not. Zero pettifoggery, sir. All right, listen up. I'm Daniel F. Durrani, and I'm going to tell you how much fun you're going to have this episode.